So our discussion for today is the ear and how you hear as you are right now through your computer, uh, listening to my voice, and we'd like to talk about how that works. The last time we met, we talked about the eye. So we have our slide here. I gave you this diagram yesterday or recently, and I'd like to go through the parts of it. First of all, the anatomy of the ear. Uh, number one we have is called the pinna. The pinna is the outer part of the ear, but I write the outer part of the ear, but it's more important than that, actually. Uh, it acts, if you feel your pinna right now, if you feel the kind of the shape of it, you got these ridges and curls, and maybe you've wondered why in the world we have such a thing. Your dog has floppy ears, maybe, or pointy ears. Your cat, kind of the same. They don't have their furrows, and they don't have the ridges. And, uh, and we're pretty sure the reason for that is to make a funnel for sound. If you think of your cat, especially, or even a dog that has pointed up ears, like a, maybe a German Shepherd, they can swivel their ears in the direction of the sound they hear. You? Well, unless you have a special talent, I really can't do that. Uh, you may be able to wiggle your ears up and down or something funny like that, but you really can't turn them. Well, if you see, like, ears are kind of tipped forward, and if you trace around in the, if you trace from the outside of your ear, trace the um, ridges, you'll find that they funnel right to the inside of your ear. And if you have somebody talk to you and cup your hand behind your ear, you'll notice or pull your pinna out and then pin it back against your head. You'll notice the difference in volume. It's a very good uh, collection for sound. It also uh, makes a very good place to hang jewelry from for some people. The next part. Moving inward, uh, what I have written is number five here. Let me see if that color shows up better. Yeah. The, number five is the ear canal. Uh, the ear canal is like the tube of the funnel, funneling sound into the inner part of your ear. So if you're thinking of the pinna and the ear canal together as a funnel, uh, that's what you have. Now what you have is the ear canal is a yellow substance known as earwax, and you've lived with earwax your whole life. Uh, you may uh, clean out your ears periodically, hopefully, because that wax will build up, and if it builds up enough, it could clog your ear canal. So you need to clean out the wax periodically. We're not exactly sure why earwax uh, exists. Um, we think maybe it's catching stuff that falls into your ear. Um, but we're not exactly sure. It's made from modified sweat glands. So, uh, and it, um, they produce, obviously, this fatty substance, which we call wax. Uh, it is yellowish. Um, interestingly, different uh, races of people have different kinds of earwax, um, but for like different uh, textures of earwax, I guess, dry and crumbly versus moist and, uh, and kind of like yellowy. Uh, anyway, um, earwax can build up in here, and you know you probably about go out and buy Q-tips to clean that out, and that's really kind of a bad idea. Uh, the thing with a Q-tip is, is a Q-tip is pretty much the exact same size as the ear canal. So as you shove the Q-tip back into your ear, you pack a little bit of wax back here against your eardrum, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, and what you could end up doing is making like a wax rock that that is against your eardrum here that prevents sound from getting through. My brother had this. Uh, interestingly, we went to the doctor, ear doctor together. He was having a hard time hearing, and I had tubes stuck in my ears. They weren't coming out. And I still remember him getting uh, them putting some solution in his ear and then rinsing it out, and this giant rock of wax kind of fell out of his ear. It was like hard as a rock. Um, he got, they like picked it out of his ear. And he instantly could hear better. Um, so you might ask, what do I clean my ear canal with? Because that's what he asked. He's like, well, well, how do I clean all my ears? I'm not supposed to use a Q-tip. And they're like, well, you take a little hydrogen peroxide, and you can try this at home. Uh, take a little hydrogen peroxide and dump it in your ear canal. And uh, it makes a very interesting sound. And then after a little while, you take like one of those baby nose sucker things, and you suck out your earwax. 
and you've cleaned out your ear disc very nicely. Uh, number six here then, already the aforementioned eardrum. Eardrum is like a, a very thin, very, very thin membrane, uh, kind of like a skin that covers the uh, opening to the ear canal, that covers the end opening to the ear canal, the end of the funnel, if you will. And as sound hits it, the eardrum vibrates. And it's possible to, and that's really pretty much all it does as far as we can tell, is that when the sound hits it, it vibrates. Uh, and it's because it's such a thin membrane, it can be burst, it can break, it can crack. And so if it bursts, if you think about hitting a drum, if you put a hole in that drum, it doesn't vibrate as well. Same thing with popping your eardrum. It's possible to pop it, and uh, it, but it also will heal. Sometimes they have to do surgery, maybe stitch it up a little bit to help it to heal. Um, the main reason you pop your eardrum, if you don't stick something into your ear, which doesn't sound like a good idea anyway, is uh, differences in pressure, which we'll cover in a second. But anyway, so as sound waves travel in, they make the eardrum vibrate. And again, a brief little segue into sound waves. Remember that when we talked about light, light travels in waves, sound travels in waves. And we measure wavelength. We also call that frequency when we talk about sound. And it also refers to pitch when we talk about sound. So, is a high pitch noise which means it has a high frequency. There are many waves passing in a second, whereas is a low pitch, which means you have few waves, a lower frequency, fewer waves passing at the same at a, a point. Now, amplitude, if I talk very quietly in a low voice, you have low amplitude and low frequency. And very loud in the high voice is a higher frequency and higher amplitude of wave and so this the your eardrum vibrates more and harder and harder as sound hits it which if you think about this if you get a loud enough noise you could actually burst your eardrum number two three two three and four are the hammer anvil and stirrup also known as the malleus if you use the Latinized form, incus and stapes. These are the three smallest bones in your body. You may have learned that factoid once upon a time when you were younger. Uh, the malleus, incus, and stapes, which as the eardrum vibrates, they transmit, as far as we can tell, their whole function is to transmit the vibrations from the eardrum into the sensory organ of the ear, which is back here. We haven't really... Uh, figured out if there's any other thing for those. And they do it very, very well in almost everybody. It's part number seven down here, which really isn't for hearing per se, is the eustachian tube. The eustachian tube connects your inside of your ear here to your throat. So just below your chin, just below the point of your mandible down here, coming out from your ear, is the eustachian tube. And the point of the eustachian tube is to equalize pressure. So if you think about this, um, if you go up a mountain or maybe you've closed the windows in your car and you feel it in your ears, what you're feeling is the change in air pressure happening out here compared to the air behind your eardrum. So. This is kind of hard to explain without you being able to see me, but the, as, the, as the eardrum, as air pressure is higher out here and lower in here, that will create a general pressure against your eardrum, which prevents it from vibrating. And maybe you pop your ears. And that pop you're hearing is when the pressure is suddenly equalized, generally by air coming out your eustachian tube. This is why if you fly, you chew gum, or you yawn, or you do something like that to straighten out your eustachian tube to allow, let's pretend that this is higher air pressure in here, which is true if you've gone up a mountain or up in an airplane, that 
this air has to come out to equalize the pressure so that eardrum is getting pushed out from behind and then the pop you hear is it snapping back and when it snaps back transmits a popping sound through your uh, sensory organs and you don't feel this but the air comes out in your neck um, many young children have this eustachian tube because they're so young is curved it instead of coming smoothly out to your neck it's kind of curved like this and this becomes a breeding ground for bacteria which is why many children, young children, probably many of you, have a lot of ear infections when they're young because the bacteria get trapped in this tube and then they make their way up into the middle ear and you get what's called otitis, oops, otitis media, which is a middle ear infection, extremely common in young children. Sometimes, if you have otitis media, to help drain the bacteria out of your ear, because they're not draining this way, they put a little tube, so that you're, here's your eardrum, they will put a tube through your eardrum, and then when you're sleeping at night, if you ever had one of these, you'll notice that in the morning you would have a little puddle of pus on your pillow maybe, because your ear infection has been draining out your ear canal. And uh, it's a very common procedure. Generally, the tubes are tapered, so as the eardrum grows back, the tube gets slowly and slowly and slowly moved out until it just falls out on its own. We can, if you have more questions about that, we can talk about that when I'm in class. Uh, number nine is the auditory nerve, and it brings the message to the brain. What we have to talk about is what actually the message is. And that message comes from number 10, this uh, snail-shaped organ here called the cochlea. The other thing you see on this slide are these things up here, which I'm going to label number 12. These guys, the semicircular canals, which actually, as far as we can tell, have no use in hearing at all, but they are used for your sense of balance. So we'll be talking about the semicircular canals a little bit later on. So what I'm going to tell you here is our best theory on how we hear um we're not exactly sure but in okay so you don't have to write all this right we just talked about this part a minute ago uh the cochlea basically converts the vibrations of sound waves of the hammer anvil and stirrup to nerve impulses using tiny little hair cells that occur inside of there. And we're going to talk about hair cells again. We talk about your sense of balance. But along inside the cochlea here, this spiral-shaped organ, are hair cells that will convert the vibrations of sound to nerve impulses. So here's our best guess on how this works. If you stretch out the cochlea so you unwind the snail okay remember it's curled up if you unwind it at this end you have the stirrup attached and then you have this like middle part and then at this end is the other side of the cochlea and let me just go back a slide to show you this this is called the round window right here so you have the oval window here where the stirrup is attached and the round window at the other end so what i've done is i've unwound the snail shape thing all along the middle of this so this is the upper part here and this is the lower part so over here, we have the upper part and the lower part, and this is what's in the middle. So you see that along in the middle is something called the organ of Corti. And what we think happens is as the stirrup bangs on the oval window, it sets up waves. What's in here is a liquid. Let's call it water. It's probably not water, but 
uh, as a liquid, and as you hit one side of the liquid, it sloshes, and it sloshes, its vibrations happen in a certain rhythm, right? Like if you, if you took your if you took your water bottle, you can squeeze it in a certain rhythm and set up vibrations. And what happens is those vibrations of liquid move these hair cells. They move these hair cells here in the organ of Corti. Those hair cells vibrate on the tectorial membrane, and those hair cells are connected to the auditory nerve. So the auditory nerve takes the messages from the hair cell as the hair cells are vibrated that depolarizes them sending a message down the auditory nerve and so in hearing what we think happens is you take la that these when i make the sound these are taking the organ of corti apologize Uh, the organ of core T, let me go back a minute to it. The organ of core T, uh, quote, feels, these hair cells feel those long vibrations. And those hair cells vibrate along with so if you have a struggling here you have a they'll vibrate slowly on a soft sound the waves will only go a little ways on a louder sound the waves will go farther along maybe all the way to the end the uh, oval the round window here is here to relieve pressure and that's how you hear this is our best hypothesis on hearing now how we understand words and how we understand you know all that stuff as opposed to song music as opposed to just background noise well that's in the brain and that's another area where we're not exactly sure of how everything works but that overall is the ear